Oh, y'all yeah, surprised because I ain't got the LA chick on my side. The passenger, the LA whip. It's all good. I got love for my LA chicks. Hello and welcome back everyone, this is Henki and the game is Pokemon Duel. Hopefully you're having really nice days, I'm chilling, I'm doing nothing absolutely at this specific moment in time. It's bad weather outside, I should be gathering olives right about here because I do like olive oil and I have my own olives so I'm gathering them to uh, squeeze the oil out of them. If you don't know how it's done, you should probably google it, but uh, hey. The Carmonte Carnival is still going through, the Queen's Cup is out here, I've played with this Caroline or Caroline more than a, a couple of times and she's quite weak I'm on 14,000 points I just grabbed my Mega Solomons and this event ends tomorrow so basically speaking I need to win 20 games today in order to grab that and every three games I need to replenish my energy because unfortunately unlike the Digimon links we cannot expand the energy pool in any way the 110 is the max amount we can get and that sucks balls i mean pokemon company this has been a while give us some way to increase our pool because 38 points for a game and not able to replenish it in no way it's pretty ridiculous because in the rate this energy replenishes itself there is just simply not enough time to play all those games win them of course and get yourself the uh, reward that you want without spending any gems. So a free play player will have a really hard time getting through in this event completely uh, winning it. So we're gonna do the Mew attack by Seismitoad, which is a dumb play to be quite frank because Seismitoad is there to block shits like Mew and shits like Lunala, make them poisoned, get myself the, uh, what do you call him? Oh, there is gonna be a bit of a miss, okay, that's good. Get myself shit like Tapu Koko on the field, send them on the entries, get myself shit like Gengar out on the field. There is going to be a max through five even, wow. This guy is uh, pretty ballsy, quite frankly, because if this fails, he's pretty, pretty done. So, I don't think I want to do anything right now, and I don't think I want to give him the victory either. So, I'm not going to move my Koko just yet towards that entry. He's going to hurdle jump me which is fine, I guess, because that really doesn't change anything. I still can block with my Seismitoad, I can still bring my Coco to the entry point, I can still surround him right now. He wants to go balls deep with a Mew. This is uh, not something that a top-ranked player, as it says on the uh, top right, would do, but it's something that our bot will do and will allow us to get a uh, easy victory right there. Probably gonna be an attack for, for apparently no reason, but uh, hey, let him be, let him do that, let him get, do his thing. We're gonna grab the victory right here, right now. It's sometimes quite hard to grab one against a, uh, an AI because they do tend to analyze the situation, they do tend to make the better plays. Like my main deck with the Sceptile Mega Sceptile doesn't work here at all. Like literally doesn't work here. Everybody is like against the Sceptile, they're sending out Terrakians, they're sending out that other little thing that uh, nullifies the uh, the shields you got. And as you saw my deck, Mew, my Sceptile, everything has the shield expanded because shield is something that doesn't lose you the matchup. If you roll your blue, you're neutral or you win depending on the situation you're at. So if Sceptile rolls a blue against whatever it is except Lunala or Solgaleo, he can jump over Mega Evolve and get the win. If Mew rolls a blue when the enemy is attacking, he can just backtrack two steps, run to the entry point, and boom, there's another one chance to roll that uh, stealth, uh, whatever, shadow flip, and get another win. So, you know, blue is very versatile because you don't lose. And since you don't lose, you have a chance to improve. And we're gonna see the opponent send out the Mew once again. I'm gonna this one time send my Tapu Koko out because I believe if he attacks, I can totally win this. And just sit there, he is gonna go for it. Double chance, Mew's gonna go for it. If you do shuttle flip or whatever, if I do roll my blue. Because if I never mentioned this, those Pokemon right here have not expanded anything. If they did have C levels from the original master or whatever not, they do not have them right here. They don't have C levels, they don't have levels at all. They're just stock condition, as their mama made them, basically speaking. And that will grant me the victory right there. Even though it will be postponed a little bit. It's still a win, no matter what. 
And there we're gonna see the Lunala going through. Irrelevant, second wind, and that's gonna just... <laughs> That's gonna just uh, waste a whole my energy. And if I was a free-to-play player with no gems to spare, or no gems to spend on this game, that would be it for me. For, for, for a few hours, I wouldn't be able to play and climb a little higher. Fortunately, of course, I do whale, and I do have enough gems to replenish my energy, keep on playing, but uh, the rewards, the XP, even the money, it's absolutely irrelevant. It's just the rewards from the competition of the event like ux cubes ux the metals and so on so on so on ex cubes not ux cubes but ex metals and so on it's actually the thing that is worth so we're gonna see seismitoad okay phantom energy gengar this is so looking like a deck that i played recently and um i really don't know what i want to play here okay this is an interesting thing that i was thinking about this is a cheese deck basically speaking this is something that i wanted to test for a while and uh, this is, I think, maybe the best time to go for it. So we're going to see a lot of Zabdas and a lot of Coco and even Mega Ganger on the field alongside with a Sceptile, Seismitoad and uh, Sableye. I do have my own Sableye with one chain level, which is probably going to be better than his own Sableye because it will be winning that matchup if it ever comes to that. But uh, for the time being, let's just see what I can do with the cheese that I planned on the whole time. I mean, since the moment Diglett came out of the game, I was hoping to have him in my deck at some point in time. And I believe that the point in time is right now. I believe that the point in time is set and I should potentially... Uh, I think I should be taking this guy out here. Because this is the guy that's probably going to be good against a Tapu Koko. In his own way with, uh, with spinning. If it ever happens. So there's going to be a Zabdas. Okay. Zabdas is pretty prone to the Poliwhirl. Poliwhirl has been forgotten. Poliwhirl has been a god for a while. And nobody even wants to listen to Poliwhirl right about now. So I'm just going to send out my meal a little bit aggressive. So I don't get to lose uh, this flag of the board. And just in case that uh, Zabdas... That, uh, sorry. Septile attacks. Okay, he won't. That is good. I'm going to send out my Sableye. Just to go for that top of Coco and maybe even block that little, um, what do you call that guy? Seismitoad. So, just gonna send it out here. Seismitoad is prone to Poliwhirl's attack, attack too. And then we're gonna see a Gengarite. Okay. This is ballsy. Okay. Let's see for that, dude. Oh. Well, let's send out the Petalil right about now because Petalil is the one. That is going to be probably rolling either Sing or, or the Grass Knot or just do lose straight out. Who knows? And we're going to see a Confuse Ray towards the Bumpy Vibration, which is good enough for me because even though it will be poisoned... Okay, the Dodge. Okay, okay. This changes a lot of things, but um, doesn't change everything. So, I do have a Swap Spot. Do I want to Swap Spot with anything? Hmm, let's take this guy out here. Let's take this guy out here. And maybe... Take this guy out here. Okay. I feel a lot more comfortable right now. Is there a hurdle jump? It's important to me to know. If there is no hurdle jumps, there could be a lot of things to do. So there's a gold block and a max revive. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do this. And let's try and attack this guy, because if I can do the dig on him... Oh my god! The quick attack, the septile and the quick attack, this is so ridiculous. But it happened, what can I say? The stealth had expanded, which is pretty dumb. Uh, okay, well I do have very little here to do, but attack the Zappas, this has a humongous miss. There's nothing been um, changed or whatever. There's going to be a roost towards Hypnosis. Which is good enough, I guess, right? There's going to be Gengar there. He probably wants to kill that little Sableye that is poisoned. But that doesn't help anyone's case. Because I'm going to be sending my Diglett out here. And I'm good with this. I'm pretty good with this. What do I want to do now? I'm going to keep on spamming on that Zabda's door. Because if he rolls at 50... Or that, 
Maybe if you hold your roost towards that uh, little white, it's gonna work for me. If I put him on the, under the slip conditions. Okay, there we go. The miss is gonna go all through because of the white. That is good news right there. He's gonna back to survive, of course, I'm guessing. So we'll have to repeat the process. But, uh, you know, maybe he attacks, maybe something happens. Okay, he's not gonna attack, which is uh, interesting. So there is gonna be the roost again. And now he has to move something else. Let's see it. Okay, how about I try and evolve my little biscuit here? Because if I do manage to evolve that, there's potentially the Sceptile getting knocked the shit out of this game afterwards. Because I'm gonna make him spin AF if I do manage to evolve into the Blastoise in order for me to do the... Uh... Okay, so what I wanna do now is step right over here. Because if that Sceptile steps here and I manage to dig through Okay, this, this right now, <laughs> this right now, potentially could be game. Okay, there's a, gonna be a miss. Wow. Polyworld doing work. Do I have, I don't have a holy jump. So, so th this is something that I wanted to do for so long. Please work right now. <laughs> this is the cheese that I expanded so much EXP and Carmenite on. Of course, this is just an uncommon, but there we go. We're gonna land it and BOOM! Cheesecake Factory delivering the Diglett with a dig in the enemy goal. And Diglett can do that really effectively even from your own base as long as there's Pokemon connected one to another in a line of Pokemon to give you that cheese. And just an uncommon deck right here. Two rares and one EX manage to get me a victory of an uh, S-rated player, by the way. Just saying right there, just saying. Don't get mad, okay? That was a lucky win, but I grabbed it. So, gonna jump into another one. Deoxys, Muse, and all that crap. No one cares. You really know that no one cares about that. Just gonna jump to it, see what we can grab, and maybe, you know, Expand a little bit on the RNG part of this game. So there's gonna be a top ranked player here and it's gonna go first. Okay, I'm not saying he or she because this is AI, so it it's for the time being. And my team looks strong. I believe my little war, war turtle can kill the Mew if it comes to that. So I'm just gonna be sending that one out, straight out. Because my Diglett can't. Obviously, my Diglett's whole wheel beside that little 40 is being completely overridden by that view. And he's gonna attack, which is really interesting because if I do manage to evolve, I'm gonna go mega and I'm gonna like throw around people. Okay, that's gonna be 22 towards 22, 40. Okay, perfect. That is an evolution almost guaranteed right there. No, come on. That was a really nice double chance. Very effective. But that Mew has a miss. Which, uh, with a little bit of luck, I believe, with a little bit of luck could have, could become a death squad. Because I've said it before, those Pokemon are stuck. So if they roll what they have to, yeah, you get whatever you need to as well. And we do manage to kill that off. And he's gonna max revive, which is good enough because then again, his uh, Deoxys attack form will not be eligible to max revive afterwards. And since my Mew is a lot of sea levels on top of that Mew, I will go ahead and attack it. Because I do have my 10 sea levels, I do have that expanded. Of course, I'm gonna roll a Shuttle Flip. And I will be going backwards right here. Because I believe that he would hurdle jump me anyway, and then I would be in real trouble. So I'm just gonna stand here and end my turn right now. And we can see the Articuno popping out. Okay, broski. Let's take out a little bit of the pedal, not pedalil, but maybe the Sableye defensive. Sableye on the defensive is not the best Pokemon to have, but he's not the worst either. So, let's stand here. That hoe could potentially be dying. Poke a switch. Okay. Not mad at that. Not at all. I just want something to stand <laughs> near his goal. So I have my Pokemon touch his Pokemon and so on, so on, so on. Because this guy could potentially be losing soon enough. 
Okay, let's stand here and end my turn. The Deoxys A will advance. Wow, that is interesting and that is scary, frankly speaking. But the Shadow Sneak is going to roll, which is the only thing that he actually kills me with. And I'll have to roll out the Petalil, which is very unfortunate, frankly. Because if he attacks it, he's going to X-Attack him. Oh, the Mew is going to X-Attack. Wow, that was ballsy. Okay. Okay, there's going to be a Shadow Flip going through, which is perfectus. Because end my turn, Max Revive. And we're gonna go with the War Turtle. I don't know why the War Turtle, but it just seems that I want to have this on the field just in case it can evolve or whatever not. You know? So I'm just gonna go here and attack the Deoxys. Maybe we can put it on the sleep spell, or maybe we can kick him out completely. And this is gonna be a sleep. It's gonna make us respin. What a dumb move. Oh god. Okay, thank you, Deoxys. That was dumb from you. And there's gonna be a. Uh, Articuno coming in. Hmm. How about we stand here with the little war turtle? Okay. And how about. I really don't want to move my Diglett closer because that Diglett could potentially be the one that. Uh, and I don't really want to take this one away. Is that Diglett could potentially be digging through towards the winning situation on the enemy team? So we're gonna double chance here. We're gonna double chance. Go right here on the Moltres. And if I do manage to kill or attack or... I don't think I'm gonna kill that Moltres, but I dig around him. My <laughs> horse is the crime, right? But um, I was hoping to go somewhere near the hole, but unfortunately I totally oversaw that they're not connected. Which means I couldn't potentially go through. So I'm just going to attack this little uh, Articuno. Oh, there we go. Sleeping power there towards that miss. Absolutely great roll right there. Because that now will make my entry free anyway. And that Articuno unable to do anything about it. So my Hypnotic Bastard is going to go through with it. It's going to be a scoop up. Okay. The Ho is going to be scooped up. Perfectus. Anus Perfectus. Because we're going to attack that one. We're gonna attack that one really hard. And there's gonna be, oh, a rainbow wing. Okay, what are you gonna do? Stand on the goal? He's gonna stand on the goal. We don't kill him, nor make him asleep. Which is kind of disappointing in a way. But uh, good enough. I take that. I really take that. Okay, there's gonna be an attack on the war troll. The cyclone gig is gonna roll me through the PC, which sucks ass, but... uh. We're just gonna step one step closer so that ho -Oh has to defend and he's gonna attack me if he puts me... Okay. That was just, quite frankly, just weird. Because <laughs> I'm gonna go here. And you have to defend, okay. Well, this actually opens up a lot of possibilities because if I do manage to dig, I surround the ho -Oh, and then the... Uh... Then the Moltres has to defend and so on, so on, so on. So let's see. It's gonna be another dig towards Crushing Flames. I'm not gonna respin. I'm gonna double surround that. Gax and Mew come out. Which is very scary, but not for the war of the uh, Poliwhirl. Poliwhirl is really happy with that. So if I put this guy on to sleep, there we go. Sleep win. GG. Poliwhirl is still meta AF. Worth it. Just gonna grab that one. I believe this deck would potentially work in randoms as well. Maybe some changes to Sabalai and maybe the War Turtle. But the rest of the squad are pretty strong. Like, Petalil is really, really, really nice with the sleep. War Turtle is okay ish. Poliwhirl is still relevant. And that Diglett. The so annoying dig pattern that could follow. You just have to find the proper opportunity for him to attack an enemy and just grab that little sleazy, sleazy victory from a dig. But remember, he cannot dig past, I think, Solgaleo and Lunala. That is just something that they don't allow. But I may also, I may be also wrong because uh, that is an ability. That is not an ability, that's a, that's a skill. Yeah, right? 
yeah, that's not an ability, that's a skill, which is different. Okay. But yeah, they, they block stealth hit as well. That's a skill as well. Huh. I believe that they do block the little whatever. So what do we have here? A really big white. Okay, Poliwhirl could work miracles against Lunala. I believe Poliwhirl is a Pokemon that I do want on my deck. And this guy could potentially be working miracles for me. So let's send the new out here. And so Galio is gonna be out. Okay. Let's send the Petalil. She has a Grass Knot and a Humongous Sleep, so that could be interesting. Okay, the the bitch is gonna go through. I believe that this is a good time to bring this Diglett closer. And we're gonna bring this Polo World closer too. So, gonna see that one attacking the Mew. Okay, this could be potentially game for me, but not because Moongeist Beam is gonna roll. And I'm just gonna roll the Polo World here, really close to that little lab. Uh, there's gonna be a roll block, okay. And now I believe... Uh, that's not gonna work, because I'm gonna surround it and kill it anyway. After that, huh. Well, let's surround and kill that. I wanted to attack that little Magikarp, because that would make a really nice link towards my Poliwhirl and Blastoise and so on, so on, so on, in order to, uh, to surround that Blastoise. But it's not gonna happen just yet. I'm gonna roll out my Sableye to defend, because this is really scary against a Lunala. So she's gonna attack my Mew. It's not gonna happen this time. Very, very unpleasant. Oh, Sableye, roll your confusion forever, my bro. Okay, happy now here. I'm just gonna stand again with a little bit some of the defense out there. And maybe roll out the Max Revive for the Mew to get on the field. I feel that it's a little bit needed here. So, I'm just gonna roll it right out here, towards that Tabofini or whatever that is. There's gonna be a Max Revive again, okay. Where are you gonna go? Okay, broski. So, let's uh, attack here. Let's attack here. There's a high chance that we either put it to sleep or kill it or die. Also works. <laughs> I mean, you can't get everything, right? And that will free the Manaphy to go through. That is sucky in its own way. So I'm just gonna backtrack with my little Petalil here and try and attack this Tapu Fini. Maybe I can put it to sleep so my Mew doesn't lose. Okay, the Pony Wish is gonna go through. Do you wanna exclude something? No, you don't. I'm gonna surround the Mew. Ha. I kinda knew it, but I couldn't do anything about it. So I'm just gonna stand here and end my turn. Depending on what you do next. So you're gonna be the of the Diglett. It's quite interesting because there's gonna be a scratch towards the bubble. Okay. This now starts to feel a little painful. So I'm just gonna go double chance right now, right here, and attack this Lunala because I want to make her sleepy. Because if I do manage to make her sleepy, that's gonna be pretty great. So we're gonna go again. And there's gonna be a miss. Wow, okay, RNG doesn't like me so much, which is fine, I guess. So gonna double chance it again, and just maybe I manage to kill this Feeny if he rolls this miss, because he has pretty humongous misses, and I do have a dodge. And there's a glad doesn't leave. Do I want to respin even? I don't think I want to respin. I don't think I want to respin. Okay, there's gonna be an attack with the Lunala. What are you gonna do, broski? Neutral turn, pretty, pretty nice there. I'm gonna try and make her fall asleep. I'm gonna try and attack her here. And there's gonna be a Miss Perfecto. Pretty nice right there. Pretty, pretty happy with it. And I'm gonna send out my Mew towards that Solgaleo. Because I don't care, frankly. He's gonna attack me, which is fine. Sandstool Strike is gonna send me to the PC, unfortunately. Or knock me off. I don't really know. But um, Polar Whirl is pretty effective against that guy, as long as he rolls. Asleep. 
condition. So, let's send up the Diglett. Diglett is pretty effective. Maybe Solgaleo is something to be feared, but I believe Diglett can win me this game. So, it's gonna roll the Flare Blitz, which sucks balls right at this moment in time. Okay, I'll have to defend with the Diglett because I don't want that Solgaleo getting anywhere closer. And we're gonna be seeing that Manificent pose. She's also pretty weird in a sense, but uh, I'm just gonna stand there, not do much about it, frankly speaking. And there's gonna be a faint attack towards a Flare Blitz. Sucks. But I do have another chance here to do nothing. So there's gonna be a Blaster going through, okay. It's gonna send my Mew out. Mew versus Blastoise is something that I would like to do, if he attacks me even. He's not gonna attack. So I'm just gonna stand here with my little uh, Poliwhirl. And I don't know, okay, there's gonna be an attack. Interesting to see that, because Manaphy's song could potentially move something away. But what? Blasto is okay. I do have a swap spot. Do I want to do that? Uh, I don't think I want to. I don't think I want to attack just yet. I'm going to end my turn right there. I want to use the double chance if I want to attack that, uh, that Manaphy. Manaphy is really strong when it's coming close to you. Because he has a Manaphy song. He has a lot of things to do. Oh, wow. That was a good one. Thank you, Manaphy. And now that puts me in a really nice spot to go ahead and, uh, and win. Because he's going to blast aside. Okay, that is weird. If he decides to attack and I roll a uh, freaking... Okay, he's not gonna even do attack. Huh. Okay, broski. That is interesting. Let's stand here. Let's stand there and do nothing about it just yet. So there's gonna be a 40 towards a 40. Towards a 60. Wait a minute. Why is that, though? Why is that? Wait a minute. Oh, the Blastoise. Okay. The Blastoise made him. Well, we need to roll the 71, which I have expanded, by the way. So, if we manage to roll that, he's dead. There we go. Gonna take one out. Not gonna really spin anything. Good night, Manaphy. I'm good, I'm happy with this. But the Tapu Fini keeps on putting people on the field, so we have to take that one out really fast right about now. So there's gonna be an attack. I, I really hope I put it to sleep. A miss even, what the hell? That sucks, balls. Okay, but I did get the Diglett out. Even though I'm not gonna do the cheese the Diglett is supposed to, Gyarados is, oh, he's not even do the Gyarados. Wow, some ballsy plays from this dude. Okay, I don't need the Solgaleo on the field in no way, so I'm just gonna take out my Diglett out and uh, continue on doing whatever I was doing before this. Oh, and there's gonna be an attack, but I can still defend with a Diglett afterwards. If uh, if he manages... Okay, Will-O-Wisp. Perfecto. Minus 10 damage. Good enough. It wasn't her turn, though. So that does not work. No special conditions applied. Okay. Another Will-O-Wisp on her turn. No special conditions applied. Okay, well, I need to surround you because I really don't like you attacking my... Uh, Sableye with your abilities and whatever not. So, okay. Mew is gonna get attacked and get killed. Oh, god dang it. This is taking extremely long. So, it's gonna take this one out. I have to roll to like a gazillion rolls with uh, with the with this little one if I wanna win. So, there's gonna be a dig. Okay, let's see. No. The ability does not allow us to move through, through the Solgaleo, which I'm pretty sure is the same with the Lunala as well. So, I'm gonna attack the Lunala. I was making uh, space to attack the little bunny, the little um, redfish with my other guy, so I can get the evolution off. Okay, there we go, he's gonna give me the evolution straight out. Rapid spin once only, but I'm gonna get the blast the blasters out, which I wanted, and we're exactly the same amount of damage. And my 
purple is three stars right now, meaning I will deny his own purple if that manages to, to land. So basically speaking, our whites are equal. My purple wins his purple. That's about right. Tapofini is not here, so the little bugger, Manafi, cannot get on the field really easy. And we're gonna get the scratch off, which sucks. Oh, this is really, really dangerous right by now. So, okay. He's gonna move back, which is great. He doesn't grab my entry point, which means I don't really have to fight the Garrotters just yet. The Hypnose is gonna go through. I love that. I absolutely love that. Because now I can actually grab this here with no fear and end my turn. Okay, he's gonna... <laughs> what is happening? Explain to me a little. There's a lot of white attacks here. So if I do go Mega Blastoise right about now... Ooh, 113! Oh yes, I do have chain levels on that! I totally, totally forgot right about that. Holy smokes, I win that! Okay, and... Uh, right about this time is where I want to go Blastoise. Blastoise, whatever you want to call it, you call it that. Because white attacks here are humongous. And I think if I do manage to kill this uh, Tapu Fini... There we go! Perfecto! I'm not even gonna try to. I don't even have a Ivory Spin tactic. So, I'm just gonna go here and end my turn. I don't need to do anything right about now. I really don't need to do anything there. So, I'm just gonna attack this guy. Because if I do attack the Manaphy, the Manaphy could potentially be moving away or whatever not. So... Just gonna make you spin once. Perfecto! Good night, mi amigo. And that's gonna be the Malafi. The second one is gonna spin. It's gonna be the second. Okay. And I do still have one more spin, and it's still gonna be the Malafi. Perfect. Perfect. Two Pokemon knocked out. Solgaleo is asleep. He cannot do anything, and the weight win is gonna pop in my pocket after 102 turns with a top-ranked player AI bot. But this deck is pretty darn amazing. You have the Diglett, he has that one trick pony thing going on for him. But uh, he's very effective, trust me, because if you do have someone eligible to surround, he can dig past that and surround the, uh, the enemy's goal without much trouble. Like, there's just a little precautions that you have to take pre-steps in order for that to happen. So that's gonna be signaling 15.500 Points right about here. And do you have enough energy to go for it? Because this video is getting a little long, a little longer than I expected it to be. And I don't have, so I'm gonna be taking a break, uh, having some food. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you're doing great in this one. Hopefully you do get your EX cube. What are you gonna fuse it in though? Are you gonna fuse it in something uh, meta? Or will you wait for the next banner? By the way, when is the next banner? I don't know. Because I'm really waiting. I, I do have 1100 gems that I want to spend, and I want to spend that on the new Pokemon. Some power creep, something great, something unheard of, something amazing. So, hopefully you do too. If you enjoyed this video, put a thumbs up under it. If you're not a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe and, you know, click that little bell icon. And, uh, as always, have a nice day.